Hello, students. All right, we are here with our hottest topic of the year, continuing our discussion from yesterday. Today, we will be finishing up our notes on heat energy. So if your books aren't open already, make sure you get them open and let's pick up where we left off yesterday. You may recall at the end of the period yesterday, we were discussing uh, the different types of temperature scales. And we left with this comparison of some common temperatures between the three different temperature scales, the Celsius scale, the Kelvin scale, and the Fahrenheit scale, which we will no longer be using. We will be using, as I've mentioned, the Celsius scale, uh, previously known as the centigrade scale, for our purposes in science class. And we will be using the Celsius scale in the lab tomorrow. But before we get to tomorrow's lab, we have to finish up our notes. So let's continue uh, by talking about heat. And it would help if I went to the right screen here. There we go. Let's talk about a unit of heat, which is known as a calorie. Now, raise your hand if you've ever heard the word calorie before. Okay, now who can tell me, what do you think a calorie is? And don't just repeat what it says up here. What is a calorie? Pause and discuss. Well, in fact, calories are a unit of heat and calories are used to measure the energy content in foods that we eat, like my little uh, snack item here, has 150 calories. We'll get back to this in a little while, but check this out. Speaking of food and heat energy and calories, look at these equivalents here. Five pounds of spaghetti. Now, I love spaghetti. And I could probably easily eat a pound of spaghetti without a problem at one sitting. Maybe even two pounds if I was really hungry. But five pounds of spaghetti, that's a lot of spaghetti. Five pounds of spaghetti, believe it or not, have the same amount of heat energy as it would take to brew a pot of coffee. And we're not talking about a Keurig. We're talking about a regular percolator uh, coffee pot, which requires a lot of heat energy. Check this out. I don't know if any of you like pies or cakes. My weakness really is ice cream, but uh, I also have a weakness for pies, especially this time of year. I love pumpkin pie and apple pie and cherry pie with chocolate ice cream. Mm -hmm. But a piece of cherry cheesecake would be nice, too. One slice or one piece of cherry cheesecake, which I would have no problem consuming has actually the same amount of energy stored in it that it would take to light up a 60 watt incandescent light bulb for an hour and a half. Wow, I would be happy to eat your cherry cheesecake if it means keeping your house lit. You can count on me, I'm there with the cherry cheesecake, no doubt. But look at this, driving a car for 88 miles, that would be like from our school to New York City, you could power your car with the same amount of energy it would take for you to digest 217 Big Macs. Now imagine that, in order to get from one place to another, you had to feed your car Big Macs instead of gasoline. That's kind of interesting. I, I don't think it would work, though. Don't shove Big Macs in your parents' gas tank of their car. I don't think they would be very happy with you. 
okay? But this whole discussion of calories, let's talk more about calories because calorie in science has a very specific meaning. As you know, in science, all words have very specific meanings. So let's discuss what exactly is a calorie. In addition to being a unit of heat, well, what exactly does that mean? Well, a calorie is the amount of heat energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water one degree Celsius. All right, what does that mean? Well, let me try and illustrate it for you. You may remember my little metric block here from earlier in the year, and you may remember this little block on the end has the dimensions of one, oops, uh-oh, I just lost my block. Hold on a second. Ah, oh, where did my block go? All right, I'm back. I got it. It was under the table. Whew, I lost my block. I guess losing my block would be better than losing my marbles, but I lost those years ago. All right, so here we've got a block that measures one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. What is the volume of this block? Maybe you said one cubic centimeter because it's one times one times one centimeter, one centimeter cube or one cubic centimeter. Now, if it were hollow and filled with water, what would the volume of water be? Hopefully you said one milliliter. Now, if you had one milliliter of water and we determined the mass of it, what would the mass of one milliliter of water be equal to? One gram. So if this were hollow and filled with water, this would be the equivalent of one gram of water. Now imagine we could have a really, really small thermometer and we put a thermometer into this one milliliter of water, which has a mass of one gram of water. So imagine we were able to do that, okay? And then imagine we heated it up. Ooh, so there we've got a flame and we're, ooh, ooh, that's hot, okay? We heat up that one gram of water and we're watching the thermometer in degrees Celsius. And let's say it starts off at what this is here, which looks like, let's see, this looks like 20. You tell me, what's the temperature right now on this thermometer? If you said 28 degrees Celsius, that's about what it is, about 28 degrees Celsius. So if we were to take that one gram of water at one gram of water and add heat energy so that the temperature rises one degree Celsius up to 29 degrees Celsius, the amount of heat required to do that is one calorie. So one calorie is the heat energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water one degree Celsius. Remember, in the metric system, we've got lots of ones, all right? So this is, should be an easy thing, relatively speaking, to remember. Calorie, heat energy, to raise the temperature of one gram of water, one degree Celsius of water. Okay, so let's take this a step further. Let me give you an example. How many calories would be required to increase the temperature of one gram of water? Five degrees Celsius. Well, as you can see here, the answer would be, well, five calories. So now I have another question for you. 
How many calories would be required to increase the temperature of one gram of water 10 degrees Celsius? Hopefully you said 10 calories. Here's another question. How many calories would be required to increase the temperature of one gram of water 50 degrees Celsius? 50 calories. I think you're catching on. How many calories would be required to increase the temperature of one gram of water 83 degrees Celsius? 83 calories. Y you get the idea, right? It takes one calorie to increase the temperature of one gram of water one degree Celsius. So the rest should be easy to make that mathematical connection. So you can think of other examples too. Now, here's a confusing or potentially confusing thing. When I showed you the calories on my granola bar snack earlier, I want you to look at something. Look at the capitalization of the word calorie. Capitalization counts in science. The letter C in calorie on this food label is a capital C. That is actually different than a lowercase c. Let me explain. A food calorie with a big C is actually equal to 1,000 heat calories with a lowercase c. A food calorie is also known as a 1K calorie or a kilocalorie, big K, little c-a-l. The point is that food calories, when you read food labels and you read the calories on food labels with a capital C, each one of those calories is 1,000 heat calories. So think about my granola bar here again for a moment. This granola bar contains 150 calories with a big C. How many, oopsie, what happened there? What does that mean? What does that mean? And let me just go back to normal here. I'm not sure what happened. I, I touched my screen. <laughs> All right, let's get, like, let's get back to where I was. I lost my train of thought now. So what does that mean? 150 food calories. How many heat calories is that? Well, you multiply it by 1,000. So when we talk about 150 calories in a granola bar, we're actually talking about 150,000 heat calories. So what does that mean? Well, let's think of our little cube, uh, our little gram of water and our thermometer and our heat energy. What that means is this. In order to increase the temperature of water, one degree Celsius, when we're talking about 150,000 calories, that's a lot, that's a lot. That would be like a, the amount, the equivalent of heating up 150,000 grams of water one degree Celsius. That's a lot of water. You can calculate out uh, how many liters of water that would be or how many kilograms of water that would be. It's a lot of water. And when people try to go on diet and try to count calories, when you consume calories, it takes an enormous amount of heat energy to literally 
burn off those calories in order to lose weight. Diets, losing weight, keeping track of your calories, following a proper diet, all tie into this science when we're talking about units of heat called calories. <clears throat> it's important for you to know the difference between a food calorie and a heat energy calorie. They are not exactly the same thing, although they are certainly connected. They're just off by a factor of 1,000. All right, now all this talk may have discouraged some of you from eating things, but don't worry. Your body is a furnace. Your body is constantly burning calories. Now, speaking of burning, I am dreaming right now of going to a tropical paradise. Do any of you like the ocean and, and the beach? Any of you like to go to the beach? You know, oh, I love the beach. The beach is my happy place. So I am dreaming right now of going to the beach. Now, I want to ask you some questions about the beach. If you've ever been to the beach, let's say even here in our own state of New Jersey, on a hot, sunny August summer day, and you're walking on the boardwalk, and you're ready to walk on the sand, you take your sandals, your shoes off, and you hop on that sand, what do you experience? How does the sand feel? Hot, right? So what do you do? You run as quickly as you can down to the water and put your hot little toesies into the water to cool them off, right? Of course. And you spend the day in the water, body surfing or boogie boarding or snorkeling or surfing or whatever it is you might enjoy building sand castles, whatever it might be that you enjoy doing at the beach on a hot summer day. Now, I don't know about you. I used to live along the beach, Point Pleasant Beach. I lived there for a number of years, and I used to love going to the beach. At the end of the day, when the crowds were gone and walking on the beach at night. Now, if you've ever walked on the beach at night, how would you describe the surface temperature of the sand? It's cold. It's a lot colder than the water. In fact, during the day, the sand heats up very quickly and becomes intolerably hot. And at night, it cools off very quickly and becomes rather cold. Sand heats up and cools down quickly. But if you went down to the water and you took the temperature of the water during the day and then you took the temperature of the water at night, guess what? The temperature would be about the same day and night. It's because it takes water a really long time to warm up and it takes a really long time to cool down. To give you an analogy, think about our last unit, when we were talking about motion and the motion and momentum of different vehicles like a motorcycle and a tractor trailer. A motorcycle can speed up and slow down really fast, but a tractor trailer takes a lot longer to speed up and a lot longer to slow down. Well, in this example, the sand would be like the motorcycle and the ocean water would be like the tractor trailer. Now, what we're actually describing here is our next term called specific heat. And this is going to tie into our lab activity tomorrow. And so I want to take a little bit of time explaining what specific heat is all about. Now, if you've understood my examples and my analogy there, then you have a good understanding of exactly what specific heat. But let's put it into words. Specific heat, literally, <clears throat> specifically, <laughs> specifically, is the ability 
of a substance to absorb or release heat energy. You see, all materials are different. Like the sand, in our beach example, absorbs heat energy very quickly and releases it very quickly. It has a certain specific heat to it. <clears throat> Water, on the other hand, takes a much longer period of time to absorb heat energy. It also takes a longer period of time to lose the heat energy. And again, we're referring to both of those substances' specific heat. Now, as we build upon this general understanding, let's add a little bit more detail. So again, specific heat is the ability of a substance to absorb or lose heat energy, and all substances are different in that respect. Specific heat, more specifically, is the number of calories needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water one degree Celsius. Now, that probably sounds familiar to you. If you look up in your notes a little bit, I'm going to ask you a question. But make sure you have this written down first. Specific heat is the number of calories needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water, one degree Celsius. So here's my question to you. What do you think the specific heat of water is? Think about it for a moment, look at your notes, and pause to give me an answer. Well, hopefully, the answer was fairly straightforward. The answer is one. But now what units are attached to it? Well, when we talk about the specific heat of any substance, the units we use are calories per gram degree Celsius. And we'll see why that is in just a moment. But for now, <clears throat> this is a really important point. The specific heat of water is one. 1.00 calories per gram degree Celsius. That is a number that you need to memorize and you need to know that for tomorrow's lab activity. And isn't it wonderful how the metric system is so standardized and easy? No funky number to remember here, one. When in doubt, the answer is probably one in the metric system. So again, specific heat of water, 1.00 calories per gram degree Celsius. Now, how is that determined? Well, I'm going to show you a device here first, and then we're going to talk about the math behind it. So the device first is called a calorimeter. This is a picture of a calorimeter, and you may have wondered, how in the world do they know on food how many calories a food has? Well, if you're interested in burning things, then maybe you want to become a food scientist. Because you know how food scientists determine how many calories are in food? They burn it. They burn it in a device called a calorimeter. And they put food in a little chamber here. And there's a heating element that literally burns the food. And that chamber is surrounded by a container of water. And it is that water, which the volume is known, and so its mass is known, that the temperature is taken of. And as that food has completely burned, it's going to increase the temperature of that water a certain number of degrees Celsius. And they can calculate actually very easily how many calories of heat energy were required to increase the temperature of so many grams of water, so many degrees Celsius, and voila, you've got the calculation of how many calories are in that particular food. Now, we're not going to be burning food tomorrow, but we 
we are going to be using this device called a calorimeter. Again, a calorimeter is a device used to measure the heat gain and thereby also the heat loss of a substance. Now, if you look at the word calor, calorie, calorie meter, it's a calorie meter. Remember, a meter is a device used to measure something. Calorie are calories or units of heat. So a calorimeter is a calorie meter. It's a device used to measure the heat gain or the heat loss of a substance. And so the calorimeters we're going to be using look very much like this. In fact, for, for many, many years, our calorimeters were actually styrofoam cups, one styrofoam cup inside another styrofoam cup. And it results in very accurate readings, believe it or not, because styrofoam cups are very good insulators. And hopefully you are labeling your diagram of a calorimeter in your book. And in the top of the insulator, we place a thermometer to measure the temperature change. Now, the calorimeters we'll be using tomorrow in the lab actually look like this. It is an insulated aluminum cup inside a larger insulated aluminum cup inside of which we'll be placing a thermometer and we're gonna be placing something inside that inside aluminum cup in addition to water, but we'll get to that when we get to the lab activity. So hopefully you've got the diagram labeled and now I would like to give you the equation, the mathematical scientific equation or formula for heat. What is heat equal to? Well, heat is equal to the mass of something times this funky symbol here. That triangle is called delta. It is the letter of the alphabet, the Greek alphabet, called delta. So we read that delta T. And that delta is uh, similar to our letter D for delta, D, which stands for difference mathematically. So whenever you see a little triangle like that before something in an equation, we read it delta and whatever follows it, in this case, T for temperature. So delta T for delta temperature, which means the difference in temperatures from the initial to the final temperature. We'll get to that in a little while. Times the specific heat of the substance. So this is a good equation to write down and either circle or put a box around. This is a very important equation for us to memorize. And the units that we will be adding to these include the following. Heat is always measured in calories. As we know, calories are a unit of heat. So calories are measured in, or rather heat is measured in calories. And this could be either the gain in heat or the loss of heat, measured in calories. The mass is measured in grams. The delta T, the temperature change, is in degrees Celsius. And the specific heat, as we know from before with the specific heat of water, is measured in calories per gram degree Celsius. Now, if you look at just the units in this equation, you might be able to, if you're familiar with algebra, you might be able to do something very easily with the units. The gram and the degree Celsius are basically in the numerator. The gram and the degree Celsius here are in the denominator. And if you have the same thing in the numerator as the denominator, they cancel one another out. And the only unit left on the right-hand side of the equation is calories. So calories equal calories. Calories equal calories. All right, so heat equals mass times delta T, or the temperature change, times 
the specific heat of the substance. And now let me just quickly introduce the lab activity for tomorrow. We are going to be solving a mystery tomorrow. You are going to be provided an unknown hunk of metal. And through following the procedures, you are going to find and calculate the specific heat of that hunk of metal. And by knowing the specific heat of that metal, you're going to be able to identify what that metal is because different metals have different specific heats. So with that tantalizing mystery on your mind, tomorrow we will be performing the lab activity together. But for now, I'm going to say bye-bye.